how do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? If, 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 they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It, it allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See, that, that, that's not a misuse, that's just sort of a misinterpretation. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is. Um, but it's, but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. When I was in graduate school, Joe Nealons called me one day and he said something like, if you'll stop talking to the press about all kinds of issues and stuff, and so I was starting to talk about AIDS a lot of times because they were using PCR to detect it, the HIV molecule, and I was, I was going to a lot of those meetings and I was thinking, these guys are on the wrong track and they're not looking, they've got blinders on in a sense. He said, if you just stop at, you know, you, you're probably going to get the Nobel Prize, but they don't have to give it to you until you're dead. I mean, they don't have to give it to you until right before you're dead. So make it easier on yourself. And, just, and I said, you wouldn't stop talking about something that you thought was important, would you, Joe? And I knew you wouldn't because he had been a, a real activist and against Vietnam and that kind of stuff. And I sort of, I, that was one thing I had learned from him was that our scientists had a responsibility polymerized chain reaction, or PCR, is an invention I had in about 82, 83. It's a way that you can produce a little teeny piece of DNA, a specific one, out of the whole genome, and make as many copies of it as you wanted to, and there's no limit. I was driving to Mendocino in the middle of the night, and I was, I was just cruising along in my patterns of thought. And out of that, the concept of PCR became just obvious to me. It was something I already knew how to do in my lab. I, it was a matter of heating and cooling a tube, you know. The first notion I had was to stop, and I stopped right in the middle of the road. And I said, wait a minute, somebody's gonna come along here and hit you. Do you ever watch cop shows? And you know that they use DNA to trace somebody to say who was here or who killed this person. All that stuff is first PCR, then you do the, the DNA analysis. The Nobel Prize came 10 years after the PCR was invented. It was a phone call one morning, you know, early in the morning, and I, I thought somebody was joking. It's an awesome thing. Uh, they know how to put on a show. My mother came up to the front of the auditorium and, like, hugged me. She definitely was moved by the fact that one of her boys that got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> what is it what what is it about humanity that that, that it wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen you know these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking you know he doesn't know anything really about anything and I'd say that to his face nothing the man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope and if it's got a virus in there you'll know it he doesn't understand electron microscopy and he doesn't understand medicine and that he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go, they change them when they want to, and they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans, don't, don't get me wrong, but basically there is a, there is a, there's a vast, the vast majority of them do not possess the, the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem, that's a main problem actually with science, I'd say, in this century because science is being judged by people, funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci? Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know, if Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, 
he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, ask Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But it Fauci was, didn't want to do it. 